morning. Good morning. Good morning. We talked about this in Sunday school class. Just try to absorb the message of this song. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing praise. Thank you for this love.
Get the folks, uh, if you'll do that, they will take care of it. We will not have Wednesday night services on the 24th or the 31st. But we will have regular services on the 28th and the 4th of January. I hit the big 7-0 on the 4th day of January. Lord, help me get there. <laughs> I can't hardly wait. <laughs> I've talked to the people who were 69, turned 70, and it's not a change, so I'm happy with the way it goes. So I should be happy along, along the way if I make it another, what, 27 days or so, something like that. Next Saturday at 9.30, the choir will have a special choir practice, and next Saturday will also be men's prayer breakfast at 8 o'clock, so... Keep those things in mind. Ron Carter, would you come up here, please? Ron has something that he would like to share with you this morning. On Wednesday after uh, normal Bible study, uh, the district superintendent was here. And according to the manual of the Church of the Nazarene, we had a meeting of the board and the pastor for the purpose of evaluating the board and the pastor. It was a very pleasant meeting. Amen. It was a very encouraging meeting. Yes, yes. And the best thing to come out of it is we got to put up with him some more. <laughs> <laughs> we are so pleased to say that, that again, uh, the uh, DS uh, and the board uh, both gave him uh, very glowing remarks and indeed, uh, we confirmed and, and that uh, we do want to stay with Thank you very much. I believe in four more years, we can get all the Yankee out of this man. <laughs> God has called me to do this. Remember that. Pick on the pastor as much as possible. <laughs> Folks, what a wonderful time of year Christmas is. We have heard the Christmas story basically all of our lives. But it's something that never gets old. I cannot begin to comprehend the depth of the love that God has for you and I. If I could comprehend that, I might be the smartest man in the world, but I'm far from that. But I'm so thankful this morning that God loved me enough that He provided a way through a perfect sacrifice of His Son that I might be able to be reconciled to Him. I have no standing, nor do you have any standing before God today except through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise His wonderful name. Let's go to Him in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, as we pause in your presence this morning, we just pause, Lord, to tell you that we love you. And we thank you so much for your wonderful plan of salvation, Lord, that you have provided. God, we just cannot begin to comprehend that love in our humanness and in our human minds. Lord, we accept this morning by faith what you have done for us and thank you so much for it. And as we gather this morning in your name, Heavenly Father, I pray that your spirit might come and meet, minister to each heart and life in the present. Lord, touch us in a very special way today because of your presence. Bless in this time that we spend together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gary. Stand with me. Let's sing, and if you don't...
don't know the song, well, you just might enjoy it from your list. All right.
thank you for the purchase of the poinsettias. And remember when you take them home, or probably let's take them home after next Sunday, one ice cube a day will keep the dryness away. But uh, they're beautiful. We love poinsettias. If you have not yet paid for your poinsettias, be sure to mark your check poinsettias so we'll give you credit for it. And also be sure on the Christmas cards to write just write Christmas cards in a remark. That way the teens will get it. Ushers, would you come? Billy, would you ask the Lord's blessings? get a kick out of you guys. You know, Ron says something or somebody says something, I'm going to look at Jeanette and I say, what did he say? <laughs> and then Billy comes up here and he's asked to pray and he don't know that he's supposed to pray. And we're all hard of hearing and uh, <laughs> have trouble getting them out of the seat. Anyway, stand with me again.
to say, I love you, Lord. Would you count it? Father, what a joy it is for us to come into your presence, especially during this Christmas season. Lord, sometimes it's so easy for us to get all caught up in the secular part of Christmas, but help us to get in the spiritual part of Christmas. Help us to realize that indeed Jesus is the reason for the season. Speak to our hearts, and I pray, Lord, that uh, Christmas would not just happen to us once a year, but that it would become every day, out of every month, out of every year, that we would take the time to just have a giving spirit, a giving heart, a loving heart. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Father, we, we look around, there are many that are not here today, many that are sick, some are traveling. We do lift up Vicki to you and pray, Father, that you just touch her with this back problem that she's having. Thankful for the good news of Bonnie God. Pray that you continue to touch her, touch Norma. We think of Maggie that's having some problems with the, the urinary tract infection. We pray that you bring healing there. And Father, we, we thank Father of Clara. We thank of Lucy Crow. Pray that you touch them. Pray that you continue to have your hand upon faith. This kidney stone has caused so much problems. We pray that you continue to touch and bring healing to her. I pray for Kathy that's going through some health issues. And I pray, Lord, that you just settle in upon her and touch her in a special way. Father, I thank the Sam's two, two sisters, Ruth Ann and Cecil, especially with Cecil to you with his problems that have just uh, been mounting up with this cancer. And I pray that you would just bring some healing to her body, her mind, and touch her in a special way. And Father, we pray for Billy and Shirley. They're both going through some physical problems and we pray that you touch and be close to them. Lord, they need a special touch. We thank Lord of George and Carol Lee that would be here if they could, but they're too having some health issues. And I just pray that you would touch them. Me with George as he mends from some foot surgery. Just touch him in a special way. And Lord, undoubtedly, there's some that I've forgotten, but how thankful I am that I serve a God who knows everything, who never forgets anything. There's nothing too big that you can't handle, nothing too small you might overlook. And so collectively as your kids we give all of our needs to you and ask that you work some miracles in our lives. Father we pray for our country. Now, if ever there was a day America needs to be lifted up in prayer it's today and we pray for America. I pray Lord for our leaders starting with our president, our congress, our state county and city leaders. Bless them Lord and help them to realize what made America what she is today. It was our trust, our faith in you. And somehow it seems like we've forgotten all that. Forgive us for our sins against you. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to come to our senses. Realize that soon that day is going to come when the dead in Christ will rise first and we which are alive will meet him in the air. And how thankful we are for 2 Peter 3, 9 and 7. God is not slow as some consider slowness but he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. And Lord, we do pray for the many that are out there on the safety. Bless them, I pray. And then, Lord, I pray for these that have come down to the altar. You know what their needs are. Pray, Lord, that you just touch them in a special way. Minister to them and touch them. Lord, I do pray for the many dads and moms and grandmas and grandpas that have unsaved loved ones that they're lifting up. I pray for them. I pray for their kids and grandkids, Lord, that you just work miracles there. Bless us as a people, a Christian people, that we keep our eyes centered upon you. Bless our church and help us, Lord, to be a blessing to the many that you send our way. I pray for Emily and Paul's kids and the family that are all down sick today. 
pray that you just touch them and bring health back to this whole family. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today. Thank you for meeting with us every time we're together in your house. And as we pray each Sunday, we ask now that you walk around our altar and up and down each pew. And would you give each one of us that big daddy's hug that we need. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Hawaii 
in the world has never been the same since. Several thousand were killed doing their normal everyday things because they were caught completely off guard. And it drew America into the most horrendous war that's ever been caught, fought on the face of this planet. And by the grace of God, we are here a free people this morning. Yeah. What a wonderful thought. The president said this is a day that will live in infamy, and it certainly has. We have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? Amen. Amen. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word? I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning in the book of Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 14. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord, of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be here in this place. Amen. In one accord, acknowledging and lifting up the wonderful name of Jesus. What a gift to the world. Let us never, ever lose sight of the wonderful gift that was given to us 2,000 years ago. The only thing that gives us hope for tomorrow. We pray that you be with us now as we worship you. Be with our pastors who brings the message. And I just want to say we are so grateful and so thankful that we live in this wonderful country where we have the freedom to come Amen. and worship you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I told Charles I said no that scriptures in King James. It just didn't sound like Christmas if we don't do King James, does it? In the, uh, the verses. D.M. Stearns was an old-time evangelist, and one day he was preaching a sermon in Philadelphia. And at the close of the service, a complete stranger came up to him, and here's what he said. I don't like the way you spoke about the cross. I think instead of emphasizing the death of Christ, it would be more appropriate to preach Jesus, the teacher, and the example. Stearns said, well, if I presented Christ in that way, would you be willing to follow him? I certainly would, said the stranger. All right, then, said the preacher. Let's take the first step. He did no sin. Can you claim that for yourself? Well, the man looked kind of a confusion and said, Why no? Well, I acknowledge that I sin. And here's what Stern said. Then the greatest need that you have is a Savior, not an example. And how true that is. The title of the sermon this morning is, Let's Keep Christmas. Isn't it amazing, even every year, but this already, how many attacks have been made on Christmas? It's not appropriate for us to celebrate Christmas because someone might be offended. Well, tough. Yeah. Don't you know? Amen. That's what America was founded on. But I think we can all agree that we live in a day of changes. Changes are happening everywhere we go. There have been great changes in our standard of living, even changes in our conduct and our behavior. And there have even been a lot of changes in our religious concepts. 
But there is one thing that must not be changed and must not ever be changed because it hasn't changed and that's the story of Christmas. Still the same. Hadn't changed. And although non-believers have tried and will continue to try to change the message of Christmas, it cannot and must not be done. I think it would be easier to change the colors of Christmas than with the story of Christmas, don't you? Well, if you'd like to fill in the blanks, here we go with the first one. Why seek something new? Why seek something new? My dad, uh, you know, I think I've shared with you before. When I was young, I didn't think my dad was real smart. But you know, the older I get, the more I realize that man was just filled full of wisdom. He had a saying that went like this, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And Christmas, the Christmas story sure isn't broke, is it? So let's leave it alone. There is no need to search for a new and a different story. There's only one story that still rings true. Amen. And you know, sad to say, we all feel the pressure of Christmas. And how many times have you been guilty of saying on December 25th at the evening, I'm glad this is over. Isn't it amazing how we can get so pressured by the, the secular side of Christmas. And sometimes we just push out the spiritual side of Christmas. We feel the pressure of Christmas, don't we? Carolina County Magazine once asked readers to send in some of their most memorable Christmas stories. And Ravonda Starnes told one of the most memorable stories. She said she was raised by her great-grandmother in object poverty. And she had never had a Christmas gift, a visit from Santa Claus, or even a stocking. And she never understood why. She said, I did my very best to be good so that Santa would come, but he never did. So I guess I just wasn't worthy. And one, one year as an adult, she shared with her co-workers, she said, you know, I've never had a Christmas gift. Santa Claus has never visited me. And I guess it's just because I'm just not worthy. Or her friend said, well, I want you to put a stocking up outside your front door this year. And just see if Santa won't come. And she said, I don't want to do that. She said, no, do it. So she put a stocking out like she was told outside the door. And she stayed up pretty late waiting for some sound of some footsteps, but nothing came. So she went to bed. She woke up on Christmas morning and went to get her stocking. And the porch was just full of Christmas gifts wrapped with her name on them. And the stocking was full. And it had towels and toiletries and all those kinds of things that you ladies use and need. Just unbelievably how much it was that she had. And later she said, my co-worker, that act of kindness that she gave me totally changed my life. And you know, sometimes if you're not so much about the gifts, you just say, hey, I care about you. I love you. How important you are to me. But you know, we wrestle with the problem of having gifts. I don't know how it is with you when your kids were young. A lot of times we would try to figure out what to get our kids and we'd get it for them. And, well, that's what they want and that's what they like. And they'd end up playing with the boxes and we'd put the toys aside, you know. Just like, hello? <laughs> but why not get the most precious gift of all? Of course we've got to give some of the secular end of Christmas the gifts, but why not give some special love? Why not take the time to tell somebody, hey, I love you. Give them a hug. Let them know how important they are to you. You know, there are many other things that cannot be purchased in the story that are just as important as physical gifts or presents, such as kindness, patience, a kind word, a hug. There was a little girl that was dressed as an angel during the Christmas pageant, and they told her to come down the center aisle. And here's what she said. Do you want me to walk or fly? <laughs> And the people said it was almost, there was so much faith in that little girl, we almost thought she could have flown down. May the story of Christmas never, ever leave our minds. Because it's truly a story of miracles. You know, every time I think about Christmas, I'm reminded of the words of the late Peter Marshall. I want to read this so I don't get it wrong, but here's what he would say, or what he said. When Christmas doesn't make your heart swell up until it nearly bursts and fills your eyes with tears, and makes you all soft and warm on the inside, then you will know that something inside of you is dead. 
enough on how true that is. And so it's so important that we don't get all caught up in the secular end of Christmas and let it pull us down. I'm trying to think more about this spiritual part of Christmas. And then the next blank, Christmas is often crowded out. It's often crowded out. Be on your best guard so that you don't permit the rush, the rush of Christmas to crowd out the real Christmas from your heart. In the cartoon, Family Circus, a little boy in the family is doing Christmas cards and he said, well, I know Grandma is real particular and she likes religious cards, so I think I'll send this card that has a picture of St. Nick on it. And you know, we kind of laugh about that. For, but you know we're all guilty. We take a lot of pain to take care of the secular side of Christmas, but we forget the spiritual side so much. Last December, Cynthia Crossan, who was a reporter for the Wall Street Journal, interviewed some Christmas shoppers at a mall, and she asked them, well, what are you buying, and why are you buying? And here's what several of them said. One said, I bought two scarves, one to give away and one to keep. But she couldn't decide which color to give away, so she thinks she'd just keep both of them. Another one said, well, it's one for me and one for them, one for me and one for them. Another lady said, well, I, up to this point, I've bought 13 present gifts. I'm going to give two away and keep 11. And you know, isn't it amazing to think in this season of giving that for so many of us it becomes a season of giving? Again, we kind of forget what it's all about, don't we? And then you run into people during the Christmas season and say, well, I just can't feel the Christmas spirit. Have you ever heard anybody say that? I just can't feel the Christmas spirit. Well, the solution to this complaint, tell them just read the Christmas story over and over and over. And maybe you'll change the way you think. But that next block is this, thank God for Christmas. Amen. Thank God for Christmas. I'm so thankful that as unworthy as I am, God loved me enough that he allowed his one and only son to come to the earth to die for me. And for you. Thank God for Christmas. You say, I don't have anything to be thankful for. What well, you do now? Thank God for Christmas. Thank God for Christmas. You know, I think sometimes it would be great if Christmas lasted throughout the entire year, not the second of Christmas, spiritual Christmas. The time when you and I can have that good spirit. Have you ever noticed, other than when you're in the mall, or at Walmart around Christmas season, when there's not that kind of a stress on most people are just a little bit happier than normal. You hear a lot of Merry Christmases still. We were, I'm trying to think where we were, we were in some store a week or so ago where they were playing Christmas carols. You know, Cracker Barrel, they, they've learned their lesson, they do that all the time, Merry Christmas and all that. But it's kind of nice to go somewhere where you do that. <coughs> and you hear people say, Merry Christmas to you. Because it's real. You know and how true it is. Jesus is the reason for the season, isn't he? It's all about him. It's not about gifts and giving. It's about Jesus. But you know, on Christmas, I think the whole world becomes a better place to live, don't you? It's just amazing how kinder some people are. It wouldn't be nice if we could be that way all the time. Miracles happen because of the love that fills the hearts of people. And it's a wonderful time for family togetherness and happiness. Christmas usually is a good time when you're with us. Christmas really, the secular side of it is not so much faith in them. We don't really, we don't care whether they give us any gifts or not with the family. We just want to be with the family. And uh, I told you last week, they'll say to me, well, Pat, Pat, Grandpa, what do you want? Uh, I don't want anything. Just give me some underwear, if, you know. Underwear? <laughs> But you know, when you when you get when you become a senior adult, you don't really need anything. That's right. Amen. You know, and Christmas is all about giving to others. Amen. Isn't that what God did for us? That's what He gave His one and only Son for us. But it's a wonderful time of family togetherness and happiness. And traditions such as decorating the tree can be very meaningful. I hope you have some Christmas traditions that you passed on to your kids. 
I think I shared with you a couple years ago, the one tradition that we always did when our kids were young was, usually it was Faith with Santa Claus and she put the, we had a red Santa Claus hat on. Do you know that my son and my daughter have carried that on when they pass out the gifts they have the hat on? If they don't forget it. But that's, that's tradition. And uh, you know, there are a lot of people that say, well, let's, let's open our gifts on, gifts on Christmas Eve. Why? Tradition was we always did it on Christmas Day. And of course, nowadays with kids, they're so excited. We would sometimes would say, okay, you don't want one gift on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. I've known some people that the week of Christmas, they don't want one gift tonight. And I say, well, if you do that, you're not going to have anything to open up on Christmas Day. But it's so important to have some traditions for your families. And the fun of hidden presents, forbidden closets, and bulging overcoats enhances the anticipation, doesn't it? You know, I, I shared, I know I shared with you a couple years ago, Faith and I in Colorado, we, we didn't have much, but what we did get for the kids, we were, it was a struggle to come up with the money. We were pleased that we could do it, but they never seemed to be surprised. Never understood that. And then when my kids became adults, Danielle kind of let the air out of the balloon. She said, well, Dad, when you and Mom would go to the store or something, Brian would get his knife out, and we'd open all the packages up and see what they were, and then wrap them back up again. <laughs> I said, well, I wonder why you were never surprised. <laughs> that was their tradition. And i have that's why I haven't told their children yet. Yeah. You know, uh, with Danielle especially, I love to tell stories on her. And they'll say, tell us some mom stories. And I'll start telling one of Danielle, go. <laughs> And then another thing that's always real popular around Christmas time is the fragrance of the baking of the cookies that takes place. It always helps make the house smell better, doesn't it? <clears throat> the melodious strains of the carols are restful and they're inspiring. And you know, before you know it, Christmas morning will soon arrive. It'll be here before you know it. George is talking about that magic seven zero number, how fast it comes. I'm amazed how fast time goes. Before my son had children, I told him, I said, Brian, the older you get, the faster time will, will come and move. He said, oh, Dad, you're just old. That's why you're saying that. Well, after he had his kids, he said, Dad, I need to apologize to you. I said, why? He said, you were right. I said, about what? He said, the older you get, the faster time comes. He said, it does. It does. But somehow when Christmas Day comes, you're going to be ready for it. And some way the Spirit will get you, whether you get it, the Spirit of Christmas or not. And hopefully you'll remember the true meaning of Christmas and what it's all about. This is something that uh, I, I had heard of, but I'd forgotten about it. Former first family, George W. and Laura Bush, always included a scripture verse on their Christmas cards. But Laura Bush had to change the verse on the card in light of September the 11th, 2001 tragedy. What verse do you use for the first Christmas after such a tragedy, she asked. Well, here's what she chose. Psalm 27, 13, which says, I am still confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Is that not great? And the psalm goes on to say, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And the good news, the promise of the angels is still true today. They brought the promise of peace on earth. And you know, it's not a pronouncement upon the state of the world, but it's God's promise of what his place is for the earth or on the earth. And you know, Bethlehem is the only way to real peace, to real peace. And you know, we long for the love among men of goodwill that the season brings. And we enjoy the miracles that are performed in the hearts of people. And many discover that because of Christmas, their families are strengthened and things are a little bit better. 
And the promise of the angels when fulfilled in our lives will definitely change our world. Maybe Adams always went to a particular branch office of the post office in her town because the employees were always so friendly to her. And on a busy afternoon just a few days before Christmas, she went to the post office to pick up a few stamps. And she was standing in a very long line and got to talking to a man behind her and he said, well, what are you here for? I just need a few stamps. He said, well, lady, you don't need to stand in stamps. The stamp machine's open. Just go get your stamps and take off. She said, I don't want to. The stamp machine cannot and will not ask me how my arthritis is doing. <laughs> the art of kindness has not been lost. But sometimes it gets tucked away, especially during the holidays. There's so many errands to run, there's goodies to bake, gifts to wrap, that sometimes we forget the spirit of Christmas. Sharing the good news of Jesus' birth with others by showing our love toward them. When you take the time to encourage someone, it might be one small act that could change their life. Go the extra mile for somebody that's in need. Become involved in the community. Why? Because the art of kindness is in you. And we will not spend or observe Christmas, but we will keep it in all the loveliness of his tradition. And may we keep it in our hearts so that we can keep it in our home. How important during this holy season that we pause to remember that the second person of the Godhead, second person of the Trinity, changed form and became one of us. That the Word became a human being and lived among us. We saw His glory. The glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father and He was full of grace and truth. In the beginning, there was a Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by Him, and nothing was made without Him. In Him there was life, and that life was the light of all people. Now another name for the Word is Christ. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead Trinity, was the Creator. He was the one that created all things. Now think with me for a minute on this next thing. The Creator chose to become a creature. Can you imagine that? The Creator chose to become one of us. All the power, the, omnip the omnipotence, the omniscience, the omnipresence. He gave all that stuff away to become one of us. So that he could be with us and understand us and be there with us. Hard to understand. But you know what? That was the plan from the very beginning. And John says it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. That was the plan. That Jesus would die for us. So it's good for us to remember not only the terrible price that Christ paid for us on the cross, but also to understand the unbelievably misunderstood reason why he gave his deity up to become one of us. Love. Love for the unlovable. Paul says it this way, God committed his love toward us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So as we participate this morning in what we're calling our Christmas communion, remember that Christ's body was broken for you and his precious blood was shed for you. Louis, would you get the nursery attendant for me? And uh, Greg, Ron, Garrett, Sam, and Jeanette, we've asked you guys to come help us with communion if you'll prepare. Go ahead. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that as unlovable as we are, you sent the greatest gift the universe could ever know, your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And he came to the earth for one reason, 
to die for us. Lord, we cannot say thank you enough. Our prayer is that during this Christmas season that we will all take the time to try to do our very best to empathize, to be, to share empathy with others through the love that you've given to us and help us to love others the way that you did. Bless us now as we continue in this special time where we're doing memory of what you did for us. As you know, the Church of the Nazarene, you don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a Nazarene. As long as you're a Christian, we welcome you to take communion. And I think our numbers are short enough we can all come at once, kneel in both pews and front rows, and are come and see our ushers up. Take care of you, though. himself ordained this holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and wine, emblems of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The feast is for his disciples. And let all those who have with true repentance forsaken their sins and have believed in Christ unto salvation draw near and take these emblems. And by faith, partake of the life of Jesus Christ to your soul's comfort and joy. And let us remember that it is the memorial of the death and passion of our Lord, also a token of His coming again. And let us not forget that we are one at one table with the Lord. Jesus Christ was broken for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of what Christ did for us. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Once again, we want to say thank you so much for loving us as unlovable as we are. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to pause and think back what you did for us and how it was the very beginning, it was the plan that you'd set aside that your one and only Son would come to the earth and die for us. All we can do is say thank you, Lord. And I pray that you would just continue to help us to remember this special time of communion. And Lord, as the hustle and bustle of getting ready for Christmas comes, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us not just to think about the secular Christmas, but also the spiritual Christmas. Now bless us as we go our separate ways. Give us a good week. And we ask these things in your precious name. And all God's kids said, Amen. 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 And you're dismissed.